Father God, as we do things a little differently in the talk this week, please reveal yourself to us and show us new ways of looking at your world. Amen. The inspiration for what I'm uh, doing this morning began about a month ago, was it now? It, you know, the world scene has changed so dramatically recently that I'm losing track of time. But you'll remember that Malaysian airliner coming down over Ukraine and all the, all the worry, all the concern, natural concern that people wanted closure on that, those who had lost their loved ones. And this made me think a lot about Nigeria. We seem to have just completely lost sight of those schoolgirls that were taken into captivity a long time back now, end of March, early April. One hears nothing in the news. The newspapers have moved on. We don't actually hear anything in the church. And this makes me concerned. We're not praying for the release of those girls. Which I find very strange given the mix of people in this church. You know, are we of a more English background not sharing the pain that Nigeria is suffering? Are our Nigerian friends not bringing this to us for some reason? But I just felt, Lord, how can those, all those families, they're not getting any closure and we're just forgetting them. And that's what made me feel that we should begin to think about the newspapers as a group. And I'd like to invite you now to just call out some of those concerns that are on your heart at this moment. They may be local, they may be national, they may be international. And we're going to have a lot of time for prayer in this uh, uh, service, so towards the end, some of these topics will have been dealt with as we go through. Uh, David and I are going to be talking together, uh, but others, will, there'll be a, a time at the end to bring those to the Lord in prayer. So call out some of those concerns, please. Ebola. Ebola. So some of those issues will crop up as we, um, David and I talk, and then others then uh, during the time of prayer at the end. Uh, please uh, join in. Thank you for putting all those forward. Part of the theme of t today is who is in control? This is God's world. And God is in control. Even though sometimes the individual events make it difficult for us to see that. So we're going to read Psalm 33 now. Um, David and I are going to read alternate verses. And if you'd like to join in, it's on page 560 in the church Bible. So if you're on this side of the church, join in with me. If you're on that side of the church, join in with David. But no obligation, no obligation. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him with the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Their starry host 
by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people who chose of his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on the earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those who hope in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, for Lord, even, even as we put our hope in him. That is a very rich psalm. It repays uh, a lot of study. I'm just going to pick out a few verses from it. From verse 5, it tells us that the Lord loves righteousness and justice. It's part of his DNA that he wants us to share. Verses 6 to 9 tell us that the world is not only his, but he made it. And we see that also in the beginning of Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Verses 10 and 11. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Some verses there for us to hang on to in this, in this time, you know, that the Lord is in control. And then 13 to 15. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. The Lord is watching, but it seems that he actually expects some of us to watch with him. From Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. So David and I are now going to act out a little bit of what this watching and praying might be all about. That was a nice dinner, Nigel. Yes, wasn't it? Very nice too. Ah, coffee? Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. Yeah. Oh, nice thanks. Yeah. Mm. Right. Well, it's good to have a selection of newspapers. It's a bit sad that they're last week's, but uh, at least you know, they're, they're <laughs> interesting. They've got some you know, good yeah. stuff in them. Local one. Yeah. Anything interesting in yours? I found one. 
Yes. Yeah. Patients left stranded in ambulances for eight hours. Oh, yeah. oh, can you imagine that? Sure. When you think of all the, all the effort of getting, uh, calling out an ambulance in the first place. Yeah. Yes. Mm, at least you get in it. Maybe we'll look into a bit further. Maybe there's some verses in the Bible that you know, apply to that sort of thing. Yes. Let's look at a bit more. Details transferring patients from ambulances into A&E beds up about 50% since last year, causing stress to patients and taking ambulances out of service. Take yeah. ambulances out when you've got more patients. Yes. Yeah. That's not very Well, good. if they're stuck there, then... Because the crews stay with the, uh, with the uh, patients until they're handed over. Well, I know that hospitals are really busy. So I've been in there recently, and the nurses are really great, but they're running about all over the place. Yes. And it says here about them being understaffed and discharging patients. They can't even get them out of the hospitals when they're ready to go. Mm. There's a couple of verses, I think, that come to mind. Um, Isaiah, Isaiah 49. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. Mm. In all that, you know, the compassion that the nurses have, they've got to convey over to the patients and they, they do that to the best of their ability, don't yes. they? Yep. Another one came to mind as well in Proverbs. Remember Proverbs 3? Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. For he will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Mm. So God's a healer as well, isn't he? Yes. Hmm. Do you think this is something we could pray about? I think so. That'd be good. Yeah? Just a quick one, maybe. Maybe other people might hear and join yes. in as they hear us. That'd be good. We give thanks for our national health system, for the dedicated members serving in this area who have chosen to equip themselves and to serve. Thank you for all the facilities readily available to so many of us, in particular our local hospital in the LND. We are aware of issues that make it difficult for some of our care to be as good as the staff would like it to be. So we pray for the government that they will provide sufficient funding to ensure that, ensure that this important work is not hampered. Amen. Amen. Mm. And if anyone would like to join in, please, please do so. I was struck, David, by something in the Herald and Post. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's, it's good to see some good news out <laughs> of Luton. What and got there? here, last week, there was this about the tournament, the football tournament between schools. It's the 14th annual schools festival in memory of a Luton youngster who was killed in a car crash. Mandip Mudha. And this festival was called, or, or by bringing people from different schools together, 22 schools represented, it really celebrates the 
diversity of the population in our town, while at the same time raising funds for local charities. And this year, it was for a five-year-old cerebral palsy sufferer who needs an urgent operation. And in fact, the following week, we were able to read that all the funds have now been raised for that uh, little girl to have her operation. So, you know, we do need to celebrate when good things are happening. And you know, there's a verse in Revelations that is relevant to this. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. We're all going to be together in heaven, from different races, and you know, in a way, what we need to be praying about is that here in Luton, we see some of that co coexistence between the different races happening. As indeed it does, but let's pray that it will be stronger. So, Father God, we thank you for that, that recent event that raised all that money and that also brought people, young people together from so many different national backgrounds. We pray that, we pray for peace in our town. We pray that the schools particularly, will bring together people, children of different backgrounds and help them to learn to live alongside each other in peace and respect for each other's different views. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, did you see any of those um, Robbie Williams movies? Yes. yes. It's so sad that yes. some with um, brought so much joy to people, mm. his life cut short that quickly. Yes, it's tragic. But it made me think that, you know, even in, a, in Luton, there's, there's so many people that have reached a point of despair. Mm. You know, they don't seem to have anything to grasp onto, and life seems pointless to them. Yes. But things about it shouldn't be like that, should it? And yeah. You know, straight away a couple of verses came up to me. Psalm 55. Cast all your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let your righteous be shaken. Yes. He's always there. He's always, he never changes. Mm. So you can't put your trust in money. Friends have always let you down, however yeah. willing they are. Yes. Um, but God never changes. And Peter, 1 Peter, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And it's not a care just for today. I think he cares for us forever. Yes. And there's one more that came to mind as well in John, John 6. Look at that verse there. All yeah. those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. So when we've chosen to follow Jesus, we've made that decision. He'll never reject us. Yes. Uh, maybe just pray around that. I'm sure that other people will know different situations mm. of um, their relatives and friends. Yes. Dear Lord, you probably all know or have known of those who have been in the situation of despair. Father, we lift them and their families to you. We pray for your unchanging love to touch them in a way which will give relief and comfort everlasting. Amen. Amen. Mm. Yes, Lord, we pray for all the different agencies in our town that work with people who are in despair. Think 
of the various uh, debt advice bureaus, citizen advice bureau, Luton community money advice. Think of the people working with mental issues, I pray for Bedfordshire mind, pray for power, a charity that helps people who are vulnerable, helps them to find the help that they need elsewhere. We think of Noah, working with people who are right on the margins of society. Think of Azalea. Lord, we bring all these organizations to you and pray that they will be really effective in working with those who are in need. And we pray that those in need may themselves see where to gain assistance, where to look for assistance. In Jesus' name. Last week's paper had some quite a strong headline, Save Us From Death. This was all to do with ISIS moving in to northern Iraq already done huge damage in Syria. They seem to take advantage of the breakdown at the head of government in Iraq to be able to move in quickly and the forces of Iraq just melted away. And that made it even worse because they left their weapons behind that had come from America. And uh, so those are now in the hands of ISIS which then proclaimed itself as the Islamic State, which has pretensions not just for that area, but uh, could spread across large areas of the Middle East. And it can also be a threat to people right across the world. David Cameron has written in the paper today about this. It's what a th it's already posing a threat within Europe. This is why you heard me say to Chris that I have big difficulty with calling it the Islamic State. I feel that this is something where just by calling it that we're giving credence to their claims. So I prefer to just call it ISIS. But in their rapid advance across Iraq, they made some 200,000 Christians homeless by taking over, first of all, Mosul, which was the biggest concentration of Christians in Iraq, then Karakosh and Bartelia, and all sorts of other small villages around. And then what we're hearing about mainly that they displaced these 150,000 Yazidis from the town of Sinjar. And they fled up the mountain for safety. And I can understand why we're hearing mainly about the Yazidis, because they're absolutely hated by the Muslims. That's seen as not being part of the mainstream of religion. Christians are... Christians and Jews are accepted as people of the book, but they reserve a special hatred for these Yazidis. But the Christians have also suffered very severely. Commentator on BBC this week, I don't think she was a Christian, but she 
came out with this comment, we live in apocalyptic times. I felt how right you are. That description could easily be justified by a reading of Matthew 24. Jesus said, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to the, be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most people of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. There's real persecution taking place there in Iraq and it's been going on all, all around the world but it's particularly severe there at the present moment. And Christians are being apprehended by ISIS and, and told to turn to Islam or be killed. And that is going on and many are being killed. But we need to concern ourselves for our fellow believers. As it says in the book of Hebrews, remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners and those who are ill-treated as if you yourselves were suffering. But above all, we need to remind ourselves that God is in control he is working his purposes out. He knows when the end will come. And he has planned the end from the beginning. And Jesus won the decisive victory over Satan. And we are just living in the, the time of those mopping up operations. So let us pray. Father God, when we face such difficult times for our fellow believers, difficult times too for the Yazidis, difficult times for so many other countries in the world today. Lord, we can only trust in your word that says you have planned the end from the beginning. That what is happening, you can incorporate it into your plans. But Lord, we cry out to you to have mercy on, on your suffering people. And we cry out to you to protect all those who are working to help them. All those who are taking aid. We pray for protection on them as they fly in the help. Be with your suffering people in Iraq. We pray a particular blessing on Canon Andrew White in the vicar of Baghdad who is so caught up in the suffering of your people there. We thank you for him. We pray for strength for him as he has his own disabilities and yet he s keeps going working for your people in that land and in contact with the 
the leaders of the government, helping them as a voice from God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Did you realise we were looking through these and something's not in there? You know, there's nothing about Syria. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Nothing about Nigeria. No. Yeah, it was the front page a few weeks back. Yes. And just suddenly it's gone. And I wondered how many more things there are that are just not reported and mm. sort of slips our mind and just takes the background. We're not praying about it. No. And... Um, it's easy to forget, isn't it? Yes. You can even wonder whether there's still a war taking place in Syria. It's been so quiet exactly. in the news. Yes. I, was, I was talking to some people in church on Sunday and they wrote down a load of bits on a flip chart, things mm. that they're concerned about as well. I'll shout out a few. Mm. Oh. The Ebola, you've already mentioned that. Iraq, ISIS the planes that came down mm. Afghanistan, Palestine, Israel education mm. comes up, goes down vandalism just seems to be taken low priority you never hear about black people in America no. and then you get things that are covered up like the information needed about the accident in Berry Park and then there's more general things. Yes. So maybe it's a time we should all just open this out a little bit more. I think so. Yes. See if there's anybody else like to join yes. us and pray for some of these topics. Right. I'll kick off. Okay. Mm. Lord Jesus, so many issues appear to have slipped the press and sometimes our prayers. We just look at the flip charts and see that even within the small congregation we have listed many areas of concern so Lord we take this time to lift some of them to you and to show our concern and ask you for your intervention Amen, Amen. We pray Lord for the teachers in our schools that seem to be required to take on so many more responsibilities than teachers had 50 years ago. And we particularly think of that point on the board about extremism in schools, that teachers are expected to watch out for what is going on. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them as they have to concern themselves about young people who may be at that point of being turned to go out as some have already to Syria we pray Lord that for our schools that they may be able to watch out for the symptoms we pray for community leaders who are in contact with young people that again they may be, a, be alert to the signs pray for neighbours above all we pray for families as we've seen sometimes families have been taken by surprise we just pray that the Holy Spirit will be there alerting people so that action can be taken. Amen. So we've tried to model what it might be like to read the newspaper with the Bible alongside you. Um, I confess that I don't do that, but in putting together this, uh, this session, you know, it's a challenge that I'm going to take away with me and think, you know, Sunday afternoon I like to sit and read the newspaper this Sunday afternoon I'm going to put the Bible there in case there's something that comes to me and, and I should stop and pray as I read the Bible 
This is God's world, and we need to learn to view it with his heart, to see what makes him weep, to see the direction where he might be moving, and see where he wants us to direct our prayers. Each of us needs to be alert while doing our normal duties. But could God be calling you to be one of his special watchmen? And if anyone feels challenged to engage with others in prayer for the suffering church, do please speak to me afterwards because there is a group of us who meet in Luton every month. So let us pray. Father, as we read or watch the news this week, remind us that this is your world and that behind all the good and bad actions of human free will, you have your eternal purposes, which you are bringing to fruition according to our timescale. That's according to your own timescale. Give us compassion for those who suffer when bad things happen and prompt us when you want us to help. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I'm not going to be long, but um, you know, I was asked to also talk uh, uh, briefly to introduce the, uh, the, the offertory. Um, as we've been reminding ourselves, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And this includes what we receive as salary, pension, or increase in our assets for whatever reason. Christians believe that in giving, we return to God some of what is rightfully his. I'm just going to read a few verses from Malachi. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Those words written to the Israelites still relate to us because God still promises his blessing. Blessing not only on those who give, but a blessing on the church and a blessing on the nation as people give. But blessing is more about well-being than material prosperity. The Bible gives us a strong warning through the book of Job. Job was a righteous man, but God still allowed him to suffer tremendously. And then he restored it to him later. And Paul writes about how he knows both the good times and the bad times. So even there, Paul, as a real man of God, went through hunger. So we need to see Paul received great blessing from the Lord to carry him through. So that blessing is there to be waited for. God loves cheerful givers. So if we could have the collection now, please. Perhaps Andrew would like to just play a little bit on the guitar for us while that's being done.
yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. <laughs> 